Hey guys, today we are going over lifting and moving patients. That is what we're going to cover. Uh, just a quick video, I'm not going to cover everything, but I'm going to cover some pretty important stuff. So first off, what is uh, body mechanics? What does that mean? So what that means, that means that you're using your body properly, so you're actually using your body in an efficient, in a good way, effective, to where you're not actually hurting yourself. So you're able to move a patient without causing harm to yourself. So I'm going to add uh, the right way of moving, or oh, I mean, sorry, the right way of using body, your body, to move a patient without hurting yourself. So without hurting yourself. So without causing harm. So this is uh, the key right here. Because we can move anything to any location really if we wanted to, um, you know, with a reason. Um, but the key here of body mechanics is moving the patient without hurting yourself, okay? That means using the right posturing, right technique, the right equipment. That's what we're talking about here. All right, so when it comes to actually moving a patient, take the ego out of the equation. What does that mean? Why am I saying that? Because usually this has to do more with males, especially younger males. We, we kind of feel, I mean, cocky, that's pretty much the word to use. We feel like we can do more than we actually can, right? Especially when it comes to physical ability. So what that means is that just because you don't, don't try to hurt, don't try to move a patient that you know you can't move. I mean, if they're a bigger patient, if they're a large patient, and you think maybe I shouldn't move this person because I might hurt myself, and you probably shouldn't move that person, right? So don't do that. Don't try to uh, prove yourself to your, to your partner, to the patient, to people around you. Don't try to prove yourself to yourself. Just uh, be realistic about it. So whenever you come across a patient, and you're not sure if you should move them or not, ask yourself these three questions. First, how big or small is my patient? So how big or small are they? Can I actually lift this patient up? Or maybe should I wait? Also, Am I in decent physical shape? I'm not, I'm not stating that you have to be Arnold to lift a patient, but you know, you know yourself. Do you go home after work and work out for 30 minutes before or after work? Or are you one of those people that stay home and play Xbox and eat hot Cheetos that entire time, right? So you know your physical condition. You know what you do outside of work or outside of school. Uh, and then lastly, should I call everyone? <laughs> I'm over exaggerating, but should I call Calvary? Should I call more people? Or should I call backup? Uh, not for a dangerous situation, but should I call a nearby a BLS or ALS unit that isn't doing anything to help me lift this patient? That's very normal. Sometimes we have to call people to assist with helping um, in lifting a patient that's pretty heavy. Or maybe you can just ask for assistance from people that work in that facility. If you're like an, an, a nurse, a skilled nurse facility, call for some people that can help you uh, lift. That's very common too. So, these are pretty much just the intro to this chapter that I'm going to be discussing right now. So with this in mind, have a game plan. Like understand who's going to do what. Don't just kind of say like, all right, here's the patient. All right, uh, let's go. Let's take the patient. And then just kind of go at it. You're going to fumble the patient. It's going to look messy. On top of that, you might fall down the stairwell. And that's not good for business, right? So have a, somewhat of an idea. Uh, who's going to get this this part of the patient? Who's going to get the legs? Who's going to get the arms? 
Um, are we going to use a stair chair? Are we going to use a gurney? Are we going to use a long board? You know, it's not rocket science. Don't overthink the situation. But, you know, just have somewhat of a, of a, of a picture of who's going to do what and just kind of go at it. Um, I know it's a simple thing to do, you know, lift somebody and move somebody, but you, got, you, you have to have somewhat of a game plan and not just kind of throw yourself in there like any other situation in, in the medical field. So as far as lifting a patient, now we're going into like your body posturing and how to actually lift a patient. So what you want to do is, let me see if I can use this. I'll just use my hand, not a big deal. So what you want to do is you want to have your, uh, your legs, I'm not sure if you see my legs, nope, this thing right here is covering it, um, but I'll draw it for you. So we'll say that this, these are the legs for your patients, right here, right, that's the ENT. Closer to you, 
is because if it's farther away, the weight has more leverage to weigh you down more, and you're also more prone to injury. So that's why you want to keep the uh, weight close to you. When you're carrying, lifting and carrying a patient. So how do we lift the patient? Easy. Uh, there's really only one good way of lifting the patient and doing it properly. Obviously, you know you have to adapt and overcome out in the field, but the best way to actually lift the patient, I'll draw a new one over here, is by doing a what's it called again? Let me see. A power squat, power lift, power lift. The thing called power lifter, doing a deadlift, right? They have their back straight and then they have their, their legs shoulder width apart and they just squat down, right? Well, with this, you repeat, when you're lifting the patient, that's exactly how you're gonna lift the patient. This right here is your back, I'll extend this out, the chest, kind of make more sense. Um, and then, you wanna bend your knees and keep your back straight. And when you're lifting a patient, these are your arms, Let's say there's a bar right here for you to lift from, right? I hope that makes sense to you guys. And then you want to just kind of squat down. So let me move this again, and maybe I can show you with me how I would lift the patient. So if the patient was on the floor, so can you see this? Yeah, I think you can. So the patient was on the floor, so this, this patient is a little bit lower right now, right? So they're lower. Uh, I don't have a gurney here, I'll tell show you with the gurney, not how to catch a person, so. What you would do is you want to squat down and keep your back straight and then just use your legs. And you see how, you saw how my back didn't really move, it kind of just stayed sturdy the whole time. That's exactly what you want to do, too. Um, so use your legs, now your back, and now your body. Uh, shoulder width apart, you want that balance. And when we think about lifting a patient properly, think about uh, a power lifter, how much they can lift a ridiculous amount of weight, right? And their posturing is perfect. So that's exactly how you want to do it. You don't want to pull with your back or anything like that. Um, there's also this thing called the power grip. But really the power grip is the power lift, except that you're really gripping on everything. So all the power grip means is that you just really have a good grip on whatever you're, at, you're actually lifting. Everything's curled up and you really just have a good grip and now you're lifting like a power lifter. Same concept. Uh, that's the only difference. So, let's say you got the patient, you lifted him properly, you used the, uh, the power, power lift, and they're on the gurney now, right? So now you and your, and your partner have to transport this patient. Um, the trick here, and it's really not a trick, it's uh, you always want to push the patient. You never want to pull the patient, okay? So the rule of thumb, and I'm not sure if this is a textbook rule, but this is the field rule. Um, and I'm sure it's written somewhere as a rule. But when you have, let's pretend that this table right here is a gurney, right? Well, you and your partner, if you're taking a patient somewhere, the feet, the patient's always moved forward with the feet leading, okay? So wherever the feet are pointing, that's the direction you're gonna move to, you're gonna move the patient to. So the person in the back of the, of the patient, so if you're in the, head, in the head, the head of the patient, you're in the back of the patient, they would push, okay? They would push. The person at the, at the feet of the patient would navigate, and that's how that works. So the, the person that's, that's on, on the head of the patient is pushing to where you wanna go. The person at the legs, at the feet, they navigate to where the patient will be going, all right? And that's how it works. Also, you always want three points of contact on the gurney at all times. So if this person has, this person usually would have two arms on the gurney pushing, and this person would have at least one arm. Three points of contact in case the, it does, the gurney does uh, tip over or start to tip over, you have better balance, balance over the gurney, and you can kind of maneuver it and save the patient from falling. That's the, uh, the reasoning behind that. So I'm just gonna talk about, how much time do I have that? All right, so I'm gonna go over um, just extrication of the patient, three different uh, ways of extricating or level of why you would extricate a patient, emergency moves, urgent moves, and non-urgent moves. 
What we're talking about here is taking 